So uh, this is uh, Mortgage Wise with Mike Wise, and today we have a special guest uh, with us, and his name is David Stevens, Dave Stevens. Um, he has been uh, the CEO of the Mortgage Banking Association, and uh, and I, you worked at the Federal Housing Commissioner as uh, in the Obama administration, is that correct? Yeah, I was the Federal Housing Commissioner for President Obama, that's correct. And then... And then you've had 40 years in uh, uh, in, in mortgage banking of, uh, of some sort, right? Maybe uh, you've owned a couple of businesses. I haven't owned any businesses. I've, I've uh, I started with World Savings in California, actually, um, back in 1983 and rose up through the ranks, took it, ended up running all of uh, Mortgage for World and got recruited by Freddie Mac in Washington. Uh, and I became the head of sing the single family business there and I uh, had a variety of senior executive positions in both real estate and mortgage. I ran a very large real estate company called Long & Foster. Um, we had about 14,000 real estate agents. It was the largest privately held real estate firm in the country. So I've done a lot of things and then got called by President Obama's team to come in and work for him uh, during the Great Recession uh, in 2009. And when I left, I became the CEO of the Mortgage Bankers Association in Washington. So that's, that's the bit brief bio right there. <laughs> All right. Sorry about the glare in the background. The sun is coming up in California, so um, hopefully that uh, doesn't bother anybody here. Uh, so tell me, um, you know, in your podcast the other day that uh, that I listened to, you talked about a little bit of the housing market and and where that's headed, and, and you know, lack of inventory, and should you buy now? Should you buy later? What is is the market going to crash? Can give me your kind of two cents uh, on where the market is right now. Sure. I mean, look, obviously, interest rates is the, is the story of the day, and that's what's um, putting the dampening effect on the real estate market. But if you take that aside, and by the way, these, these high rates won't last indefinitely. It's a, a total reaction to the Fed's, uh, the Federal Reserve's quantitative tightening to slow down the inflation in the country. And when the Fed is done, rates will start to subside. Um, so we can talk about that if you want to. But yeah. the reality here is that the fundamentals of real estate in this country are very strong. If you're a real estate agent right now, um, and not, you probably don't feel it, but you're going to over the next decade. You're on the literally the, on the front doorsteps of the biggest wave demographically in this country of population coming into their peak home buying years. We've never seen a wave this big, and it's going to last easily through the rest of the decade. Um, and so demand is, is going to be strong. The challenge is, as you know, Mike, and everybody who you work with uh, in, an, in, in our industry knows, we have a shortage of inventory. I mean, we, have, we haven't seen inventory levels in terms of months' supply of homes available for sale. We haven't seen it this low since the 1980s. And so... It is a really uh, dramatic effect when you see this massive wave of incoming demand combined with you know, almost historical low inventory levels. And, and that's a problem that uh, we're going to face as a nation for some time. Home builder uh, housing starts, you know, we're pretty uh, we're picked up a lot this year uh, and they'll continue to pick up over the next couple of years. Um, but you know, it's gonna be inventory is going to be the story, particularly where you work, for example, Inventory is the name of the game, and that's what's driving home prices up so much. So, um, but you know, honestly, it, it's going to be a, a really great rest of the decade. You, you, by 2025, you'll look back at 2023 and say, "Man, I can't believe we got through that." We survived, because, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. So, tell me, like, just um, for kind of you say this, <clears throat> the biggest wave of homeowners. Why? Uh, is that because of birth rates uh, or like what ages or like why do you say that this is going to be uh, the biggest wave of home buyers coming through? Yeah, and you've, I think you've seen some of my presentations, Mike, where I show various slides reflecting this. But there's a whole group of economists in this country who are using all the same data um, and it's census data. And all it does is it, there's a, a, a graph that distributes the population of the United States by age from zero to 100 plus. And each year, what we call cohorts, each year um, you can see the population of Americans in those various age cohorts 
Um, the median age for buying a home in the, in the United States today is age 34. I, it's, not, it's, it's an economic uh, data point that the New York Federal Reserve produces every month. Um, and so it's factual. National yep. Association of Realtors Economists uses the number. The MBA's Economist uses that, that age. Um, and the millennial generation, the generation we've all been talking about for a long time, yeah. it's finally the biggest wave of millennials is just coming in uh, to the age, to, to, to that median home buying the year. 34, yeah. Age 34. And look, not everybody buys at age 34. Some buy in their 20s, some buy in their late, in their early 40s when they buy their right. first home. But that is the median age. And you see homeowner uh, ship rates, uh, if you look at it by age bracket, um, ages under 34 in this country have a home ownership rate in total about 20%. Once you get 35 to 44, that next decade, the home ownership rate leaps up into the 60s. And so um, you're all going to see a profound impact. I, 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 it's not a question. It's not a uh, uh, something that's speculative. It's just pure data. It's, you've got the biggest wave of Americans from the biggest generation in Americans rolling yeah. into the that median age for home ownership. Uh, and it's going to be really profound. And I, I have, when you see my presentations, I, I show multiple charts, um, multiple uh, uh, views of that demographic, because I want to have, I, I like to show people that this isn't just an isolated topic that someone's talking about in some uh, in some hallway somewhere. This is Mark Zandi, the chief economist for Moody's, Mike Frattoni, the chief economist for the MBA, Dwayne Duncan, the chief economist for Fannie Mae, the Public Policy Institute in Washington, the Urban Institute in Washington. They all have similar looking charts in their presentation about the future state of the housing market. And so while we're struggling now because it's high rates and we're in, entering winter, right, the holiday season, I don't have to tell you what happens in the purchase market. We all know. Uh, so it's going to be a rough winter, no matter how you cut it. Um, there's certainly deals to be had, but it's going to be a rough winter. But next year, we're going to see lower interest rates. Um, uh, the economy will still be strong, and we'll have that demand uh, wave c coming at us. And by the way, each year younger than the current year, uh, all, every American younger than age 34 right now for about the next 10 years, there's actually more people in that. So area. that so that keeps on coming up. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So so today, you know, there's a couple of different factors. One is that people have uh, they've refinanced over the last couple of years. They have the three to four percent mortgage rate. So the inventory is low there. And now let's talk about like the. Let's stay with the short term as far as interest yeah. rates. Even this week, uh, the last uh, 10 days in the mortgage uh, world, the bond market has gone uh, a little bit sideways. Uh, well, actually, it's been the yield has gone way up over the last couple of weeks here. Right. So what has been the impact of that? And how long do you think that we're going to see those uh, this yield kind of sit up here at this uh, at these, you know, 20 year highs? Uh, look, you got the perfect storm going on right now. Um, not only are we at the worst part of the housing purchase cycle on an annualized basis, this isn't a spring market, it's the winter right. market. Right, yeah. And you always see a general slowdown anyway. Um, these higher rates are have had a horrendous effect on uh, the purchase market. I haven't seen the data from NAR yet in terms of purchase activity, but I, I do know when I talk to lenders about mortgage pipelines, um, the word dry seems to come up quite frequently. Yeah, I and, heard housing you know, freeze today. Yes, and we've seen rates pop up to, you know, we're now seeing eight numbers, uh, eight handles on, on a lot of, of mortgage rates. Yeah. And so, um, you know, who would have thought? But look, that's being caused, I, I, just to explain it, uh, it's being caused by two technical factors. One is um, actually three. The biggest buyer of mortgages uh, over the last decade, after, actually since 2008, has been the Federal Reserve. They right. engaged in quantitative easing during the Great Recession, three rounds. Uh, ben Bernanke started it first, and then uh, uh, Powell took over after that. And then in uh, March of 2020, we had the biggest round of quantitative easing ever in American history. And quantitative easing, all that means is the Federal Reserve buys up a whole bunch of treasuries and mortgage-backed securities, yep. which, cre which creates what we call a short in the market and the net effect of that is it drives rates down. So your two and a quarter rates that you saw 
uh, which I think was about the bottom in 2020, uh, the latter half of the year, was solely driven by the Fed's activities. Well, they're now not buying anything. In fact, they're getting rid of some inventory. So um, that's created an excess supply in the market. So that's one. Two, we had bank failures, right? Silicon Valley Bank, which everybody in California knows up in the Bay Area. Um, yeah. But we had uh, two others. We had Signature, which is the next biggest, and that was really uh, impactful. Um, they both had very sizable mortgage portfolios. And uh, when the FDIC took them over, they hired a company called BlackRock. BlackRock is now selling off those portfolios right now as we speak. And it's adding additional supply um, to the marketplace. Interesting. Yeah. And so, and so the supply and demand problem is this. Um, for those of you who don't play in the mortgage world all the time, um, uh, unlike you, Mike, but the... Yep. Uh, uh, when you have an excess supply with not enough demand, right, uh, the prices of the bonds drop at auction, but correspondingly, the rates being offered rise. So put it simply, the, the market has to offer a higher rate to attract enough buyers to buy up the inventory. And so what you're seeing right now is a really abnormal rise in rates. Um, we track the 30-year fixed rate against the 10-year treasury. In fact, I just posted something on LinkedIn with a chart talking about that. You can grab it. But uh, we po we look at the spread between the 30-year fixed rate and the 10-year treasury. We've tracked it for decades. Normally, it's about 170 basis points wide. In other words, mortgages are about 1.7% over a 10-year treasury. Today, they're near 3%. So yep. what does that mean? If we didn't have all of this supply-demand imbalance, uh, your mortgage rate today would be about one and a quarter percent lower, right lower. Off the top. Even yeah. with the Fed, even with the Fed tightening, um, if you just had spreads normalized, and they will normalize. So, if you talk to economists, you look at economic projections for mortgage rates going out the next couple of years, they're all the same. I I, I use one of the charts in my presentations that I give to groups, um, but every economist is predicting rates to come down next year. Some perhaps by in the high fives by the end of next year, all are in the sixes uh, by the end of next year. We'll see what happens. There's a lot of variables in play here. Energy prices have a lot to do and all this other stuff, but um, that, that's what's causing this abnormal in, in increase in rates. There's a third variable, uh, which is there's a lot of traditional buyers who buy mortgage-backed securities, not just the Federal Reserve, uh, there are investors around the globe who buy uh, mortgages from the United States because they're guaranteed by the United States government. So they come with a AAA or AA plus rating, depending which ratings agency. And they're very attractive, but um, they're sitting on the sidelines because their view is seven and a half percent, eight percent mortgages. They're all going to pay off in the next 18 to 24 months. So there's a duration risk problem, as we talk about in capital markets. And so they just don't want to, they, 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 they can't model it. They can't match it with uh, the right kinds of borrowings because they don't know how long these things are going to be around. So they, this, du this duration risk is also keeping more buyers out of the market. So we call yeah. it a, it's a supply and demand imbalance. Doesn't happen that often, uh, but it's happening now. We're right in the throes of it today. So short term, Mike, um, it's going to be volatile. That's the yeah. best I can tell you. We're going to be in a volatile period. And We'll see. Had the federal government shut down, um, we would have moved much quicker into a slow economic slowdown, uh, maybe recession. I hate to say it. You'd not be <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> don't wish for a government shutdown at all. But, right. Um, in many ways, it would have helped the mortgage industry, it would help rates, would help realtors because, you know, rates dropped during sort of economic slowdowns that would have caused a slowdown. But we do have a massive automobile strike, uh, uh, which is happening across country, and it's expanding and expected to grow. Uh, we've got a risk of a healthcare strike. We've got a risk of strikes uh, amongst airline workers. Rider strike is going on right now. And, and so these things are the kind of, are the, are the, will, can have explicit impacts uh, to a variety of economic variables and can cause a slowdown. So, you know, we need that to happen. We need the Fed to start saying, yep, okay, we're at, we're, we're at 2% or we're going to hit it. Uh, excuse me for bumping my computer. That's okay. Uh, but but uh, uh, we're done. And when that happens, you're going to see that spread begin to normalize almost immediately. Probably you'll see immediate reaction to rates. Um, but we need some event to, to to stop Powell from making comments that indicate that, you know, I'm going to hold off for now, but I'm probably going to raise again in a couple of months. Because that just, 
that creates so much uncertainty in the financial markets. Right. And, and that's why you see all this crazy stuff happening with mortgage rates. It's not good. It's it's costing Americans a lot. It's really impacting first time home buyers, particularly African Americans and Hispanics. Um, that's where you get the biggest hit. There's a data point that I published in a different piece a couple of days ago about that. But you know, wealthy Americans are gonna they may not like it, but they'll still buy a home. Um, they may hold off a bit, which I think is a mistake. But they may they may buy a home uh, because they still can afford it. But these high rates when it impacts affordability, who you're, who you're really hit hurting is, in most cases, the greatest heat is on the entry level and, and middle class yeah. America. Affordability. And that's, that's right. Yeah, that's so right. that affects a lot of people being able to afford a house. And, you know, the, the, just these, the, the rate increases just even over the last uh, month here is, is pushed people out of the market just to be able to buy a house just because of the right. affordability and not being able to qualify at this point in time. So, um, you, so long term, um, you talked about short term and it's going to come down pretty rapidly once this imbalance uh, gets kind of back into play here. Um, the, the long term kind of view is you, you think at the end of next year that we're going to be into the, to the high fives maybe, or sixes. I, it's not what I think. I actually just get a bunch of, uh, I get, I get, I get regular publications from a yep. whole series of economists every week. Yep. And um, I'm looking at what they're saying. Um, there are a few who are saying we're going to have, you'll, you have to wa watch how you read information. So um, the chief economist for first American, I think everybody knows first American in our industry. Yep. Their chief economist is, is really good. And he put out a piece that said rates are going to stay higher for longer. But when you read into the piece, what he meant by longer is through the winter. Um, and so, <laughs> right. you know, the question is, uh, the vast majority of economists believe rates will come down next year. They disagree a little bit on, um, on when, and they disagree a little bit on how much. But uh, Mike Frattentoni, who's the chief economist for the Mortgage Bankers Association, is a PhD from Johns Hopkins. I hired him into that job. Uh, one of the, in my view, I think he's the best economist in the country, but I'm prejudiced. <laughs> I, I hired the guy, but um, you know, he predicts rates to come down next year, but over the next several years, he predicts 30-year mortgage rates to normalize at around four and a half by 2025. Interesting. And so. The trend line is down how quickly and by how much in the sort of median to, 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 to short term kind of. Um, a lot of this depends on what happens to the traje trajectory of the economy, and that's what we have to see what happens and how that plays out. All right. Let's change a little bit of gears here into um, buying a, a, a house and the amount of money that you put in. And you talked about in your last podcast the that it's the, the biggest net worth uh, of a person's uh, financial position is their, their house. And, you know, you talked about leveraging uh, your money and so forth. So tell me a little bit, uh, kind of go through that uh, on how you talk through why it's so why it's such a good investment uh, to, to buy a house at this point in time? Well, uh, first of all, it's always a good time to buy a house. Yeah. And, and, and I'll, let me just cover this in a couple of ways of viewing it. Everybody has access to a website called FRED, the Federal Reserve of St. Louis. And on FRED, one of the things you can, you can get data on anything and they put it out to you in charts and you can pick the time frames, et cetera. I use their data frequently because it's Federal Reserve data. It's, it's, it's really great stuff. You can look at history of home prices. You can look at current mortgage rates. You can pull up whatever you want, um, really, in terms of the, the economy. One, th one data point I've pulled up is the median sales price of all homes sold in the United States, going back to 1955, I think is what I can get, uh, is, is the farthest back they charted. Um, it's, it's a slide that shows the line only going up. Now, there's little blips along the way. Yeah. Like the Great Recession is the biggest blip since 1955. But anybody who bought in that Great Recession, in the slowdown, they, today they're close to 40% more wealthy um, right. because of home prices. The reality is home prices always go up 
we have too much population growth, even with a slower birth rate, than we are than what we are doing in terms of building new units to meet that population demand uh, over the long term. And so we're we've been for the last 20 years in a perpetual shortage of units. Only exception to that gang is that is the Great Recession when we created excess inventory by doing unsustainable mortgage programs and got everybody into fog the mirror uh, pay option arms at 100% loan to value or 228 subprimes and all these other programs that are outlawed now in the in the yeah. United States. So, um, you know, the point being that if you just look at the data chart, the history of home prices, they only go up. The, the, the idea that right now when we have the lowest inventory since the 80s, with the biggest wave of demand coming at you, that some home buyer would say, I'm going to wait. Uh, my question is, what are you going to wait for? Um, <laughs> right. yeah. uh, uh, CoreLogic's forecast for home prices over the next year is a, in the low single digits, um, about 4% uh, average sales price increase nationally. Not all markets will go up at the same level. Some markets will go down. Some markets will go up by more. But the na national average is expected to be around 4%. Where you work is traditionally been one of the so most strong, solid, you know, real estate markets in the country for a long, long time. So, um, you know, let's just take that 4%. Let's take that in half. Let's take 2%. Yeah. yeah. My point is, you know, first of all, home prices only go up. If you can buy a half million dollar home today, which I don't know if you can where you live. <laughs> Not around here. <laughs> uh, but let's just use that as a, as a number. If it goes up uh, 2%, that's 10,000 bucks, right? And people will go, well, $10,000 on a half a million dollars, I can put that in the stock market. Well, you're not going to put it in the stock market. Why? You don't have half a million dollars. You have the down payment for a half yep. a million dollar home, which is about 50 grand. And if you put 50 grand in the market today and it grows by $10,000 in a year, you've just had a 20% return on your investment. And, and so the reality about real estate, unlike any other investment return in the United States, is it's other people's money, or in a technical term, it's leveraged investing. I'm on the board of directors of a New York Stock Exchange listed company, and we lever our capital six, seven fold, whatever, in various market conditions, uh, maybe higher, maybe lower, but we can lever our capital. Consumers can't typically do that. The only real investment that will grow in, in asset value is the ownership of a single family home. And so there's a study, there's a, you can go pull up this website, the Survey of Consumer Finances. If you pull it up, uh, you'll see it's from the Federal Reserve. Um, it's their website. And you can put in all sorts of data, but if you do this, just take a note of this uh, while, you, while you're watching this. Um, Google, but for median net worth based on housing status. There's two drop down screens. So you can <clears throat> go right. median net worth based on housing status. And what comes back are two lines. One is renters and one is owners. I've seen it. <laughs> and renters have no, no net worth. On average right. in this country, renters have no net worth. And by the way, their net worth hasn't changed. Uh, it, this is uh, two decades of, of data that they give you back on the chart. And it literally has not changed. It's just a Home flat owners, line all the way at the bottom. Flat line across the bottom. Homeowners yeah. have vast uh, amounts of wealth relative to renters. And the reason is this, um, unless you're in the top 1% in the United States, uh, the super wealthy, um, you probably don't, uh, you, you probably don't invest as much as they do in the, in the stock market. Yeah. If you're working, you may have a 401k, you may have an IRA or um, something like that, that you have yep. some going into off of your pay, but most Americans don't have a lot of excess cash flow to stick in the market. So what the survey of consumer finances also shows is for 92% of Americans, uh, their entire net worth is built into the ownership of their single family residence. And so what does that all tell you? We have the biggest wave of home buyer demand ever coming into the marketplace in American history with a, almost a historic shortage of supply. Supply and demand drives value. And that means values are only gonna go up over the years ahead because of that. Um, Two is yep. we have the data from the Federal Reserve that says home values only go up, meaning home prices only go up in the United States. And third is uh, the value of owning a home 
is the single best asset class you can have to build intergenerational wealth in the United States, which means not just money for you when you retire, money you can pass on to your kids. And um, that's really a, that becomes a real class distinction uh, over the long term um, for families in this country. So uh, my answer to anybody who says I'm waiting, I'm like, what are you waiting for? <laughs> that, home, that home that's available for half a million today or a million, whatever it's going to be. It's going to be gonna, more tomorrow. It's going to be ten to $20,000 more on average next year. I mean, yeah, right. it's an absurdity. Yes. And they'll say, well, I want to wait for lower rates. You know this, Mike. You don't. You rent your mortgage rate. The mortgage yes. rate is something you get just to get access to that home. When you refinance it, uh, you get that lower rate. By the way, if rates go up, you protect it. So locking in today on whatever rate is out there is actually the best thing you could possibly do because it's an absolutely no-lose situation for you. But waiting on the home purchase, that's an absurdity. Um, if you can afford the home, you want to be a homeowner, uh, you have the money for the down payment, all those variables, there's absolutely no reason. And I think, and there's been some recent articles on this over the last several days, uh, some economists stating that this fall, this winter, may actually be the last home buying opportunity for buyers. We may, we will have more of a buyer's market over the next six months till March of next year than we will any time after that. And so- Interesting. You know, yeah. it, it, because then we're gonna have the spring market's gonna kick in, rates will start to come down. Uh, people who have been trapped in their homes for too long are going to finally say, all right, I'll give up my 3% mortgage for a five and a half or a 6% mortgage. I just got to get out of here. I need that extra bedroom for the kid we had two years right. ago. You know? And so um, this is just going to, we're going to see a lot more activity. Yeah. And if you look at all forecasts for home sales and new home sales, existing home and new home sales for 24 and 25, uh, it's, pretty significant increase. In fact, the expectation for 2025 is we're going to sell a million more homes in America than this year. So it, it's going to be a pretty interesting market going ahead. We just have to survive, uh, literally nice. survive the next winter, this winter ahead. The winter storm that's coming, right? Yeah. Buckle down and get ready for the spring. You Dave, uh, thank you very much for taking the time uh, to uh, to do this interview. I appreciate it. Um, uh, hopefully, maybe we can do another one uh, in the near future, but I uh, appreciate your time and uh, uh, we will talk to you soon. So this is Mortgage Wise with uh, Mike Wise and we will talk to you uh, at another time.